We have breaking news because this is the season of breaking news, and that is that the January 6th committee has just in the past few minutes released transcripts from 46 witnesses in its investigation. The transcripts include very bold-faced names that you will remember and recognize, like Trump Attorney General Bill Barr, Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Trump's Transportation Secretary, wife of Mitch McConnell Elaine Chao, White House Counsel Pat Cipollone, and the president's own daughter Ivanka Trump. Joining me now with more information is NBC's Capitol Hill correspondent, Ryan Nobles. Ryan, it is good to see you. You have the unenviable position of being on the front lines in a news hurricane up there on Capitol Hill. I know there's hundreds of pages of transcripts that we just got. Can you tell me anything about the selection of I've, these names? The I've committee read all seems 46 to be... transcripts already, Alex. <laughs> I've read, they're all done. Amazing. I can tell you everything about them. Uh, I'm sorry, you, I didn't mean to cut just, you off. <laughs> no, no. And, and you're a speed reader, and that's why you're the Capitol Hill correspondent. Before we get to the substance of all of the transcripts, talk to me a little bit about how the committee, you know, how you're reading their selection of which transcripts to release and in what order. Yeah, I don't think there, there's a real rhyme or reason to it other than that they're trying to get them out as fast as they possibly can and that we've n known from the beginning that there was a security protocol that they needed to go through before they released them. They're going through and they're redacting the names of people that uh, they're concerned may be of some level of a security risk. Uh, they're, you know, eliminating any kind of personal identifying information that could lead to identity theft or th something along those lines. So that that's a process. And, and it appears that once they've scrubbed a transcript uh, that from with all that material that they feel comfortable with, then they release it. Now, there did seem to be a bit of a theme with the first uh, tranche of transcripts they released because that seemed to be everybody that just pled the fifth uh, to every question. But that might also have been because those are a lot easier to scrub because they didn't provide much information. Uh, and then, of course, they released the Cassidy Hutchinson transcripts on their own. She was, of course, perhaps the most important witness. This tranche tonight uh, is filled with, as you point out, some really significant and important names. The first one right at the top of the list is Pat Cipollone. Uh, who turned out to be one of the most crucial witnesses over the course of all of this and someone that it took quite some time for them to get in front of them. But you mentioned William Barr. What I'm most interested in and kind of the ones that I'm, I'm, I'm going to first are the, the transcripts of which we did not see that much of these individuals over the course of the hearings. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't provide important information. It just didn't make it into the kind of production that you were talking about with Robert Draper before you came to me. So, for instance, Hope Hicks, uh, there's uh, her transcript, uh, that's the one I was actually reading before you came to me. Th they've only shown a, a very tiny bit of her transcript, and it was in the uh, in, just in this last uh, business meeting that they held uh, a, a couple of days ago. So we had never seen any of that transcript prior to that. So that's one that's of, of interest. You mentioned Mike Pompeo. We did not see much from Mike Pompeo uh, during the hearing. So it'd be interesting to go in there and see some of that. And then the other thing I'll say about kind of my interest level in these transcripts, and I'm sure others, is that there's a lot of information that was potentially gleaned from these transcripts that doesn't necessarily have something specifically to do with the mandate of this investigation. Uh, you know, the, what comes to mind is, for instance, the, and this has been reported by The Washington Post and others, and I've independently confirmed it, is that Johnny McEntee, who's the, the former uh, a, a White House aide, one of the top advisors to the former president, uh, testified that uh, the Congressman Matt Gates asked for a pardon uh, that was related to this child sex trafficking, uh, trafficking investigation that he was a part of. Now, that had had nothing to do with the investigation principally. They were asking about it because they were asking about people that were looking for pardons related to the investigation, but that came out as a piece of information. So that's not something that you're going to see in their report, but it might be something that pops up in a transcript. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for uh, as these transcripts start to pour in. There's, there's a lot that this committee uncovered, and not all of it could be fit even in an 800-page report, Alex. <laughs> you know, Ryan, you thought tonight was going to be a time for eggnog and mistletoe, but we know how we're spending our evening. NBC's Capitol Hill correspondent, Ryan Nobles, thank you for making the time. We will catch you soon.